Hey guys, welcome to video two in our Amazon Seller Central series. Today I'll be showing you exactly how to create a listing inside of Seller Central. If you haven't already set up an account, then I recommend you head back to video one up here to do so first. Otherwise, let's dive in. So a common theme in Seller Central is that there's often a lot of different ways to do the same thing, which is sometimes useful, sometimes confusing. Let me run through a few of the most common ways to add a new product. You go up to catalog, add products, inventory, add products, inventory, add products via upload, inventory, manage inventory, add a product. They all come to the same place. Depending on the time which you watch this, Amazon may have rolled out an updated screen here that may look like this or completely different. Amazon likes to make changes. Either way, it will ask you to search for a product. This allows you to sell on someone else's listing, which is what you would do if you're using the retail arbitrage or wholesale models. To do so, search for the product name and include the brand name if you know it to bring up the specific listing. Here, you can sell your own. For private label sellers though, which is what we recommend here at Jungle Scout, you wanna rewind a step. And instead of searching, you wanna click on create a new product listing or I'm adding a product not sold on Amazon. Remember, we're creating a brand new product that doesn't already have an ASIN or UPC code, description or listing. Let's use a keyboard tray as an example here. Side note, this is actually a real product that we're selling at Jungle Scout and we have an entire case study that you can check out up here. Now, we wanna drill down into the category that best matches our product. Office products, office supplies, desk accessories and workspace organizers, platforms, stands and shelves, keyboard drawers and platforms. Here you will need to fill out the fields marked with an asterisk before continuing. Jungle slider keyboard tray. Our brand is Jungle Slider. Now there are some considerations you should keep in mind when choosing your brand name and we have an entire video dedicated to this. So I'd also recommend checking that one out up here. Now your manufacturer can be whatever you want. It can be your store name or your brand name, for instance. You can also make up the manufacturer part number. It really doesn't matter what this is. You can open up the advanced view to see some more options. Now these will be most important if you're looking at selling variations of your product, which brings me to the next tab. If you do wanna sell variations of your product, such as a different size or color, or even bundled with different items, then I recommend you set this up now. Even if you aren't planning to add these other variations until the future, it's better to do this now as it can be a lot of hassle to do this after the fact to a listing. So let's choose color and size for example. We'll create a black in both large and small and then a white in both large and small making four variations. Again, it's fine to only begin selling one of these variations. The others will just remain inactive until you send in stock for them. This brings us to an important field to talk about here, and that's product ID. To list your products, you require a unique identifier for your product, such as a UPC, EAN, or GCID. For our purposes, we will be using a UPC barcode. Furthermore, we'll be acquiring this UPC through the GS1 platform. Now there are cheaper options for purchasing UPC barcodes, places like Speedy Barcodes and many others, However, they're not technically allowed by Amazon. So you do run the risk of having your listing suspended. There are stories of people who are still using these and getting away with it. So this is a decision that you will need to make in terms of how much risk you wanna take. But just know that GS1 is the only place to be 100% safe. So for those of you wanting to go the GS1 route, let's head next door for a quick tutorial. But wait, one moment, just before we do, if you're finding this video valuable, could you do me a big favor and give it a big thumbs up just below? And if you want more videos like this in the future, would you consider subscribing just below this video also? Even tap the bell icon so you get notified every single time. Thank you so much. All right, let's keep going to GS1. I'll do my best to explain this as simply as possible and not fry your brain. Wish me luck. Here are the different variations of UPC barcodes. The number of digits varies per country, but for our purposes, we'll be using a GTIN 14. 
Now, I've got to admit that the GS1 website, like Seller Central, is a bit complicated to navigate, but good news for us is that there's only two steps we need to follow. Step one, we need to get our company prefix. Let me walk you through the setup process. From their homepage, we'll want to select apply for a barcode. Here, we're given a price breakdown. Typically for our first product launch, we're looking at $250 plus an annual renewal fee of $50. At the first tier, you can have up to 10 variations or products. And after that, you would fall into a different tier as outlined here. Next, we'll want to scroll down to the bottom of the page and select the button titled Fill out GS1 company prefix application. We're not a customer yet, skip. We then wanna fill in all of our company information. This is why it's critical to have your company name and LLC set up before anything else so as not to mess things up. We talked about this in episode one. Next, we're going to select no for the FDA question. In the choose your prefix capacity, we'll select one to 10, unless you plan to launch more products than that, variants included. Also, this is where the price tier comes into play. And in the one to 10 range, your cost would be $250 with an annual renewal fee of $50. Lastly, check the box and click next. Finally, we arrive at the payment page. After completing, you'll be given your GS1 company prefix certificate within 48 hours of checkout. Your GS1 company prefix certificate is a 10 digit number that identifies your company for global trading. Reminder, this is just step one of the process. Let's move on to step two, get variant barcodes. To do this, we need to head over to dh.gs1us.org and log in with our new GS1 credentials. Next, we'll select create from the product tab located in the upper left corner. This will bring us to the create product page. Don't let this overwhelm you. It's a simple product detail page. Here is the information that needs to be entered to activate the lower half of details. Product description, brand name, SKU, which is optional, product industry. For private label sellers, this will be left at general. Packaging level, for private label sellers, this will be left at each. Typically, is this item variable measure can be left unchecked. Select, can this item be purchased by the consumer? Next. Ensure to click the save button to enable the GTIN assignment. Once you click save, you'll notice that the GTIN button will be activated. Here you have three options. I'd recommend selecting auto assign GTIN to avoid any errors. If you select auto assign GTIN, you'll see a list of any prefix GTIN you have available through a drop down menu. If you only have one, then you know, no drop down menu will appear. Select the prefix GTIN you desire to use and then click on the assign GTIN button. Now, you'll see that you have the GTIN, GTIN 12, which is UPC, and the GS1 company prefix field will populate. The last step is to select in use from the status field. Hit save and your 14 digit barcode will be generated. That's it. We're now ready to add that number to our Amazon listing. So let's head on back to Seller Central. For each of the variations, let's enter a GTIN number into each of the product ID fields. This one GTIN will then be assigned to that specific variation. We'll also make sure to select GTIN from the drop down field. You're required to set a price for each as well as a manufacturer part number. Don't stress about the price because again, until you have the product in stock, none of these listings will be viewable to the public. So you have plenty of time to change this. Right now, we're just getting the listing created. These are all the required fields at this point. You can explore these other tabs now and add details such as product images, your description, bullet points and keywords, but it's not necessary at this point. And we will cover this more in in-depth videos in the future on how to do this. Click save and finish. And congratulations, you've now created your first listing. To edit any of this in the future, come across to inventory, manage inventory, and then edit from the drop down menu. So that's the breakdown of how to use Sell Essential to create your listing. I hope you got a lot of value from that tutorial. And if so, please give us a big thumbs up below. And then the next episode of our series, we'll be covering how to create a shipment in Sell Essential 
in order to send your product from China into Amazon. So make sure you check that one out. Thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you in the next video.